Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files with Tommy. I just realized when I was looking through a video list for an answer to somebody's question that I have Ephemera Files by Tommy. I keep saying Ephemera Files with Tommy. So the name may change. I may change what I'm saying. I don't know. But for now, welcome. Today I am finally going to get started working on my journal for the October one-of-a-kind junk journal challenge with Dear Julie Julie. I will link her below. I will link the challenge below. And it is already, oh my goodness, uh, the 14th. So we are halfway through this month. I have picked out my papers. I have picked out some accessories, uh, embellishments, things I'm going to work with to make the different items on the challenge. And you can still join, it's never too late. You can join the challenge and I, it's really, it's a lot of fun. I think that I did not get last month's completed, but I really enjoyed seeing everybody else's posts. And for August, I finally got it completed in October. But there are no punishments, no harsh effects or feelings, no resentment for not getting it done. You are creating something. And that is the important part. So let's get started. I found this pad of paper that is from 2018. So I know that I've had it for a year, at least for a year, not for a year. Um, and I found it when I was going through my stash because I am also taking part in another challenge with Emily from Emma Ephemera's Treasures. Yes. And I will also link her below. And that is a no spend till 2020. And that is not spending any money on craft supplies except for things like glue, copy paper, staples, things like that, that you just, as a general rule, have to replace. So, in doing that and digging through my papers, I found this. And I am pretty sure that I have only used a couple of papers out of this because it was almost completely full. 48 sheets, and I think that I had 45 sheets still in it something like that. So I picked out the sheets that I wanted to use and I think I actually have one of each of these designs except for the one that both of them were gone. And right now I don't know which one that was. But I am going to use not only the papers, I'm going to use the cover. I'm going to use this as part of my cover because I'm going to title my journal in bloom. And I'm going to cut apart each of these little squares showing the pages to help in making ephemera. And it's on a nice card stock, so it'll work well in my journal. These are the papers that I chose. The ones that are turned diagonally, I am not going to cut straight across. I am going to cut them diagonally so that I can make some other creations with them. And some of these other papers, like this one that has the border all the way around, I am also not going to cut. It is going to get folded. So I am going to separate the ones that I have set apart to be diagonally cut. These are the pages that are left. I think I had my numbers wrong earlier. 48 pages, but 24 designs. And so I had almost all of the 24 designs. And then I still have the others that are duplicates here, except for the ones that I had already used and was out of. So I am going to set this to the side. I will be pulling from this for different parts of the journal, but they will not be journal pages. And like I said, this one is going to get a special fold because I do not want to lose this border. I don't want to lose these yellow wild roses down here. So I will also set that to the side. And actually I'm going to set it to the underneath. Then it doesn't get mixed up with this pile. So all of these, I'm going to cut down to nine inches. And I have already sorted them 
according to the direction that I would like for them to be cut because I said I want some of my lines to be vertical and some of my lines to be horizontal I want to make sure that all of my words are right side up and in the right part of the page others are pretty simple to decide this one I'm going to cut this part off because I want to keep that at the top. That is why it's in there that direction. And the same with that one. So I'm, I have already decided that I'm going to cut these down to nine inches. And so my book will be, my journal will be nine by six, at least on the inside, the pages will be. The outside tends to be a little larger, as you know. So I'm going to turn it this way, turn my stack and let's see, where am I going to set it? I will set it here and then I will put my cut pages over here. That way I don't get anything mixed up. This is my Fisker's cutter. I really, really like this one. It goes through several thicknesses of paper if that's what you want it to do. I do not want it to do that right now. I want it to cut one at a time. How I chose nine by six is that I looked up the golden ratio. For some reason, I was reading something and it made me think that that's what I needed to do with this junk journal. And the golden ratio is one to, let's see, it is one to 1.816. Eight one six, I believe. I should have had that. I do have that written down. I do not have it written down. I have written down what my book would be being cut as the golden ratio. So I believe it's one to uh, one point oh eight one six or six one eight, something like that. And the golden ratio was something that the Greeks thought created perfection in artwork. Now. We know that being human, we're not going to be able to create perfection. But the Greeks would strive for that. And I don't see a problem with trying to make things as nice and perfect as I can. But I'm not going to beat myself up if something is not perfect. This is for a junk journal. Although I have been told by the young ladies in my youth group that it's not a junk journal, we should call them beauty books or Bella books or something like that. And so I tend to agree with them. Now, this one's a tricky one because I need it to be nine inches, but if I cut it off at nine inches, whoops, what am I stuck on? There we go. If I cut it off at nine inches, I think that that looks a little awkward myself. And I lose a lot of the flower up here. So I think what I'm going to do is cut an inch and a half off of each end. That way that is centered. Let's see, so an inch and a half would be 10 and a half on this end. And that way that is centered. We have the center of the flower and we have most of the, of the print. And then we'll turn this one around and cut it at nine. That is perfect. Well, you know, we just talked about perfect. That's lovely. It's, it's beautiful. There we go. So this part is actually the quick part once you have figured out where you are cutting and what you are cutting. And I just wanted to share with you my thought process on how I figure out the size of my page, how I figure out the order of my pages, how I figure out what pages to cut, what pages to fold, and all that good stuff. This particular journal, I am not going to have a lot of folded pockets in because I don't want it to be too, too chunky because of the way I'm putting it together. It's going to be a one of a kind. It's going to be a little different from other junk journals, at least the junk journals that I have seen. 
Now this looks like it would not be a hard one to decide which direction to cut it because it looks like it's the same all over, but it's not. I had these little vines coming in this way and this way, and it took a while for me to figure out which direction I wanted them to be coming from. And that is why I do all my figuring for that beforehand, so that I don't have to do that for each page that I cut. Now, after I get all of this, all of this done, let's see. One was the top and one was the bottom. This was this way. I had to think about that one because I was talking and lost track of which way I had it laid on my stack. And because these two are so similar, I had to do some thinking beforehand on that as well. So, there is my stack of straight cuts. This journal is supposed to have two signatures in it, so I think that that will work very well. Now, these that I'm cutting on the diagonal, I'm going to do this to see where I want to cut it. And this is the tricky one because do I want to cut it there? And I also have to make sure it's centered. So like I said, tricky, tricky. Do I want to cut it there? Is that straight? There we go. And then I will scoot this over. Oh my goodness, this is not easy. This is not easy, ladies and gentlemen. And that's, I lined it up on the wrong line. Let's go over to where the cutting line is. You can see where I've cut. And I'm sorry if my head is in the shot. Sometimes you just gotta get in there to make sure it's right. All right and there's that triangle cut off. Now this makes it a little easier, not perfectly easier, but a little easier because now I have a straight edge up here that I can line this up with. Line, hmm, with uh, where I can line this up. There we go, where I can line this up. How's that? Hmm. I'm going to have to cut this little part off first because it doesn't like sticking out there like that. So I'll get everything lined up and get to where I can get this plate to make contact all the way down. And cut that little triangle off. Now I can line this up once again, and I really don't even need this paper here anymore, but I'm gonna keep it there just in case. There we go. And then the last one. We know that the page is going to be nine inches tall. So I can place this on the nine and hold it nice and straight. Put that down and cut that corner off. And then I will do that with the remainder of these diagonal pieces. But I won't make you watch me do all of that because I think that that's enough. If you need to rewind and see it, that is entirely acceptable. So in just a moment, I will be right back. These will all be cut. All right, so I have cut my three papers that I needed to cut on the diagonal. I will show you right now that one of them, I'm not sure what happened, but it ended up a little on the shorter 
taller side of things, but it is still nine inches and it will still fit in the book just fine. I also cut apart the front page, the front cover of that pad of paper. So I have my title and I have, let's see, what was it? 24 of these little cardstock cards that I can use in making ephemera, such as tags, pockets, different things for the journal. So I will set those to the side since they are cut. And I will set all but one of these to the side since it is cut. These two will be treated differently, so I'm going to move my cutting board. I love that cutting board, so I will link below how to get it. I have had it for, I am sure I have had that for almost 20 years. And I did not pay for it what you would pay now. And it has lasted me. I've changed the blade a couple of times. I've changed the cutting strip once. And right now I need to put a new battery in it so I can have my little light strip working. But I highly recommend getting that. It will last you. It will serve you well. The reason I did not cut this one on the diagonal, like I talked about doing with all the others, is I wanted to create a different kind of pocket with this one. So I'm going to hand cut this. And I know that I want to lay it out this way. So I am going to flip both pieces. Same way, the same direction. And I'm going to grab a pencil. You don't usually like pencils, but in this case, I will use one if I have one up here. I may not even have a pencil in here. That's how much I dislike pencils. But I do have a disappearing ink writer. There we go. Disappearing ink and mark be gone. The disappearing ink, when it gets completely dry, it will be gone. The mark be gone you can use on something if you don't want it to go away quite so quickly and it will wash out. And if I can figure out where I got this, I will link it below. I am pretty sure it came in a set of something that I got since all it says is Japan, but the mark be gone has a trademark, so it'll probably be something I can find. And I will share that with you if I find it. So I am going to trace this particular, um, we'll call it a template. It's actually another one of my pages, but it work, it's working as a template right now, so I'm good with that. I'll put this to the side so it doesn't accidentally get cut. And then I will get out, um, not the scissors I want, I think the scissors I want may be in the other room because I was cutting some magazines with my paper scissors. But these are multi-purpose scissors, so they will work. And I'm just going to cut along this line carefully. Ooh, I don't like that sound. Ooh, sorry if, if it gets on your nerves too. We can just have our nerves being gotten on together. That was probably the worst grammar, but I think it got my point across. And I'm going to cut this final line, and then I'll show you how come I cut this one like this. Number one, the reason I cut it like this is because I didn't want to lose my flowers. And any way that I cut it, if I cut it the same way that I did one of these, I was going to lose one or both of my flowers, and I didn't want to do that. And by cutting it this way, actually gain a place for a pocket. So, let's use this as an example. If I glue that on the back, I have two pockets right there in my journal. And this can go ahead and act as the page just like those. And I wish that I had thought of that sooner because I might have done that with a couple of those other pages that I cut that way. But this one's going to be a little trickier because, like I said, I don't want to lose any of that trim. I don't want to lose any of my flower. I think it would make everything look odd. 
but I also need it to be three inches shorter. So what I'm going to do is get my uh, We Are Memory Keepers board out. I should have. I should have already had this out, my apologies. And hmm, why is that not going? Oh, because I had it. There we go. Because this has a scoreboard on it, and because I will be folding this, I want to make sure I've got a nice straight line. I don't want to be fiddling around and ending up with multiple fold lines where I was trying to figure out what was going on. So, I am going to measure. I like this because it has it stops the paper right there. And it also, when you close it, it keeps the blade protected. So, I'm going to get the little scoring tool out of the bottom. I like that it's stored right there. And the top of the flower is approximately here, which is about five inches up from the bottom. I could do six, but I real I, I could do six as my fold, but I really, really kind of like the off-centered portion of it. So I am going to go with hmm. I should have decided this before I turned on the camera. Now, I heard on another channel, I think it was Gail Agostinelli's channel, and she says to remember which way to turn your paper when you're scoring is that valleys become mountains, which means that if you do this way, it makes a valley, and so you're going to fold it that way to make a mountain. And then mountains become valleys. So I think that, that helps me a lot. So I'm going to get right on that five, hold my paper down firmly and hold my mouth just right so I can get this score nice and neat all the way across. You saw me do that little boo-boo, but I caught it before it was too much. There we go. And so this is going to become a mountain. All right, now I needed to lose three inches, right? So I need to come over here where the two is because I need three inches. And I am going to turn the paper over. I didn't get that scored very well all the way through there. I'm still working on my scoring skills. So you just get to learn along with me if you're working on yours as well. We are going to... <laughs> We are going to score on the two. You have to press really hard to keep it in that little um, guideline there. And I did not press hard enough to keep it there. All right, so let's see if I figured this right. I don't think I did. <laughs> okay, so I have that, but then I did that and that's too short. So this paper will get used elsewhere. I'm going to get my pad of paper out and see if I have that other page. As soon as I figure out what I just did with that pad of paper. I'll put you on pause while I find it. And then I'll come back and I will be calm and I will have figured out what I did wrong on that page. One moment. Okay, so I didn't have another paper like this. This will still get used somewhere and I will have to figure out how to fix it. So it will go into my little basket of supplies that I have right here where I have already picked out several things to make special spots in this journal. So let me get all those scraps out that I just cut off. I do not throw away the scraps, including these. These are very good for making tags and belly bands. They're very strong. So here's what I've got in my basket. I have this tissue paper that came with a pair of shoes that I bought and the color is perfect. So I have added that. I have these 
two pieces of um, sari fabric that I purchased and I will link the shop down below because off the top of my head I cannot remember who it was. I'll set this to the side. I have sorted out several napkins for some napkin applique. They all go very well with this. I think that this even looks very much like one of the pages. I got out several doilies. I'm not going to tea dye anything in this particular journal. I'm just going to go with the uh, clear paper. This was a set of die cuts and I actually think that I may use this as part of one of my ephemera. Plus this card is very good weight for a journaling spot. And I may use the acetate to make a shaker pocket. I haven't decided yet. I found this in my searching through my stuff since I didn't buy anything. And I haven't used any of it yet. It's Tim Holtz Worn Wallpaper. And I think that some of these will work very well in the journal as well. I also have a notepad that is perfect for this journal. I have some washi flakes, which are stickers, but they're like washi stickers that melt into the page. These are from Park Lane. I will tag that or um, link that below. Thus far, I've only picked out one washi, and that's because this was included in the last journaling kit that I put together. I'm sure I will add more washi. I have some leaf charms. Can you see those? Those are, they are very beautiful. They sparkle and they look like real leaves. I don't know if they are, but they look very much like real leaves and they're all different. So I'm thinking they might be. I have this little package of flowers, little tatted flowers with pearl centers, some ribbon, some artificial roses I may or may not use. I don't know yet. This yarn I have that is perfect. The colors are perfect for this particular paper pad. A little bow clip that I got. I believe I got a whole set of these bow clips at Tuesday morning. I will look and see. I have some heavy, heavy thread. I have these three laces and trims thus far picked out some scrap pieces of lace that have roses in them. Another little scrap because the colors went well. This is a, a color catcher washing sheet that you put into the washer so that your colors don't run. I have a whole bunch of these, a multitude of colors, and I will give you some tips on that in another video. And then this is the ephemera that I have sorted out that I hope to use. I probably will not use all of it because that would make for a very chunky, chunky journal, but I will use a lot of it, I'm sure. And then this last item that I wanted to share with you, I went to purchase from someone on a Facebook Marketplace and I went to meet this lady, and as I was going to meet her, she had a flat tire and did not have a jack with her. So I drove out to where she had her flat tire instead of our meeting place that we had agreed on because I had a jack in my car. And we worked on getting her tire changed, but it just wasn't happening. And so she was finally able to get hold of someone in her family, but it was her son who didn't have a car and she had the only car at the time. So I drove her to her home. We picked up her son and an appropriate jack and an appropriate tire tool for her vehicle. We drove back and got her tire changed and sent her off. And instead of making me pay for this little book, she just gave it to me. And this book is perfect. It was published in 1913. And it's just a collection of poems and such. It may have even been self-published. I don't know. But this is hand-bound. Can you see that? Oh, that was really fast. I hope I didn't make you dizzy. 
It's hand bound. I cannot find really anything about this book. So it may be a one of a kind. And I believe that I can scan these and use them in journals. It's called Flowers of Friendship. You never know what you can find. You never know what will happen when you look, when you're not looking, and when you help someone that you didn't set out to help. And so on that note, I will remind you to be kind always. Bye till next time.